A double amputee and a ghost in a shell have to fight their immortal dad's best friend because he basically wants to become God. Does that summarize this series? I think this summarizes this series. That's right, today we're talking Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So the next recommendation that you guys had for me was Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Now some of you said, no, Royce, you have to watch the original one from like 2003 because they kind of skip over a bunch of stuff, they gloss over a bunch of stuff, and then not only that, but I found out that in the manga they actually didn't cover a lot of stuff that was in the manga as well. However, this is just my thoughts on Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and one big problem that I have with it, although it does not weigh the rest of the show for me. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the show, basically it's two brothers who get into magic in this world that's called alchemy. Uh, people are like, no, magic and alchemy, they're different, th they're the same thing. It's the magic system of the world, okay? They get into alchemy, sadly, their mother passes away, they want to bring her back, they try to do some stuff by basically putting cake ingredients in the middle of an alchemy circle. They try to make those cake ingredients. A person turns out you can't actually bring their mother back with cake ingredients, who to thunk it, but anyway, I digress. So they screw up. The one kid known as Ed, the older brother, kind of loses his leg trying to do that. And then his younger brother, well, he wants to bring him back. And so he loses his arm because the god of that world is like, well, if, if you want to do some serious magic like this, you need to give me something to make that happen. So as all of this plays out, his little brother is now bound to a suit of armor. They then want to correct their mistake, get their bodies back, and live happy, normal lives, as, you know, any person would want to do. So the whole story unfolds. You get introduced to a cavalcade of characters, which is absolutely awesome. Mustang, my personal favorite, because I love guys like that. Kind of reminds me of, like, Levi in Attack on Titan. Really just, I just like character archetypes like that. They're just total badasses, and they just make things happen, right? Not only that, but they are also at the peak of their abilities. So anyway, going through this whole story, they start to unravel and become a part of this whole conspiracy for this ancient creature thing, a uh, homunculus, to become God. That ancient creature thing was basically tied to their father, who is seemingly several thousand years old at this point, because of some magic rituals that happened back in the day. And now he and the father are locked in this eternal, lifelong, one's gotta be good, one's gotta be bad. I, what's the archetype for that? I don't remember. Write down below if you guys remember. Anyway, the whole story concludes that the brother, he at least gets his arm back, the other brother gets his whole body back, and everybody kind of lives happily ever after. That's the brief synopsis of Full Metal Brotherhood, <laughs> Full Metal Brotherhood Alchemist Brotherhood with the, with the magics. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. There are two things that I had an issue with in this entire show, and this is where my hot takes begin. Now, I am probably wrong in some of this, and I'm okay with that. Let me know it down below because I'm just watching the anime. So, my first issue that I have... So, uh, I'm about to say some stuff right now that's absolutely stupid because I didn't watch the credits roll on Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And uh, the thing that I'm annoyed about actually did happen. They did show it very briefly in the credits. Um, that's cool. So I'm going to say a lot of stupid things right now. Even more stupid than I've said before. I learned my lesson. You can, you can still give me crap in the comments, though. I, I do deserve it. So uh, carry on. Carry on. Uh, back to the video. At the conclusion of the show, Ed, he gets his arm back, still doesn't have his leg, whatever. He's cool with that price to pay. Kind of reminds him of the mistakes that he made. But at the end of the show, instead of staying at the farm and living with Winry, you know, the waifu that just wants to be with him because she loves him, he decides, no, instead of staying at home and living a happy life with this woman who absolutely wants me, now I, I, maybe they're a little young for marriage yet, I don't, I don't know where the story concludes. I assumed that there was like a passage of time. I'm not sure how long of a passage of time. Maybe they're still teenagers and he's like, no, nah, you know what, before we settle down and you know, have some kids, we need to grow up a little bit. But he goes off to just leave this young woman who is, is just, just loves him dearly and he goes off to travel more. And that bothered me. You could have at least taken her with you, dude. Like, come on, Ed. Like, dudes in the real world would love that. And you're just like, nah, nah, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna wait for me because I need to go see some sights. It's like, sir, look what's in front of you. Anyway, 
I see, I, I guess that's one of the critical flaws of Ed, is although he might not realize how good he has things in front of them, he's always looking for something else to chase. And I just, I just, I, you know, do the age thing and age them up, their 20s, their 30s, their however, they've got a few kids, he's still on, like, just, I, I don't know. It's weird that I wanted that ending, but I did, because I didn't really care about, like, the My Hero Academia ending when they didn't do it, but this one, it bothered me. Anyway, here's my big problem with this show. All right, so God, the truth, whatever you want to call him, the universe, the, the, the white outline that basically has no character definition because he takes on the definition of whoever is staring at him. This is something that really confused me, okay? So he obviously gets the leg of Ed and the arm of Ed because that's what Ed had to sacrifice to him to give it to, to, to be able to do the things that he was trying to do. However, the weird part for me was, and Ed would see him with those body parts, but when Alphonse goes back to the world, they specifically state that that is Alphonse's body waiting for his soul, and it talks to him as if it's his soul. Okay, is there a plot hole here? So God decides to take the arm, and he's like, oh, you've got to give me all this stuff, and then I just look like your body when you come to visit me in this plane. But when Alphonse goes to that plane in his tin suit armor, it's his soul there, and the person staring back to him, at least in this anime, wasn't God wearing his body and talking to him like God. It was his body who was still his person. And that made no sense to me. I don't understand why Ed, for some reason, had to give up parts of his body and God was just gonna wear his skin suit. But when it came to Alphonse, the rules were a little different. Now, I don't know if this gets explained in the manga or if this is, or if they did something with the translations or whatever, or if they cut out a bunch of parts or they had to try to make it all fit together. But that was something that was very, very weird for me. Now, is there something in the manga where it's like, oh no, but if God gets your whole body, he basically acts like you, talks like you, walks like you, is you, but if he only has parts of your body, he still kind of acts like himself. What's going on there? And the problem is, is as soon as I started thinking about that, I, I, I was like, wait, I, I, this makes no sense. Because even Ed goes back to talk with Alphonse's body in the, the mystical God world and is talking to like his brother. And it's weird because I'm like, wait, no, shouldn't he be talking to God? Shouldn't God be like, well, if you want to get this body back for your brother, you're going to have to do something. But it would be, it, it would be Alph, Fonz is, but I, I, I don't, because for the most part, the rules and the way that all of this stuff works is very, very tightly done. And that's why this jumped out to me. Are different rules applied to Ed's body versus Alphonse's body in the show and how they interact? That is a major plot hole for me that it doesn't ruin the show, but it does make me wonder because the rest of the writing around the magic system seemed to be really solid. And a lot of times writers kind of forget their magic system. They try to go too much, too little, whatever. No, this one seemed like it was, it was pretty, it was pretty decently well done. And that is something that I just, I, I just don't know. Once I saw it, I was like, oh, it doesn't, again, it doesn't ruin the rest of the show for me, but I need an answer to this. Why is it, why is it that Ed's body seems to be treated uh, differently than Alphonse's body? What's going on there? Does God play favorites? Is Alphonse obviously the favorite of the show? Or is Ed the favorite? Does, who does God like more? Does he play the, the truth as people call him? But anyway, guys, that's my take on uh, my hero, Alchemist Brotherhood, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Why can I not say words today? Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Just let me know down below what you guys think. Is this a plot hole? Does it, am I missing something? Is the manga, does the manga cover this? Does it do it differently? Let me know, please, because this is very confusing for me. And if you guys would like to see some of my other reactions for other anime recommendations that you guys have had, here are a few of them on the screen right now. Check those out. And the next one I'll be covering is Spy X Family, because I have been told some fantastic things by multiple people about that show. So 
Look forward to that review next week. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody.